Welcome to Dog Narmas. My name's Nicole, and today we're going to talk about ways that you can bathe your dog at home. When starting the bathing process, the first thing you want to do is wet down your dog. When choosing to mix up your shampoo to take a bath, there are quite a few different ways that we can go about this. few options that we're going to look into is the spray bottle option, the mix with the kind of pour method onto it, and then we're actually going to froth our shampoo uh, for the last step. This is typically the route that I go. It goes on more evenly and it washes out much easier. The first method we're going to look at is the good old spray bottle. I buy these in bulk because with all of the cleaning that we do, you always lose a cleaning bottle and you can't ever find it. The reason why we use the spray bottle method, especially we encourage owners to do this a lot, is because what ends up happening is you put in a ton of shampoo and then you can't end up rinsing it out very well. So we're going to open this up and we're going to fill most of it up with water. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our shampoo. Okay, replace the top. And shake it up. And you'll see most of the foam will go up to the top and that's fine. It'll settle down when, once you're spraying it in. And then we're going to spray it into the coat. When spraying, we're just gonna take it and we're gonna spray it in. And the reason why we do this is because it makes it easier for all that shampoo to wash out. See how easy that is to spread around? And then if you need a little bit more, you can just spray it. Now we know we have the shampoo nice and even, it's not super thick, and it's gonna wash out when you're done. The next method I'm going to show you is the concentration bottle method. The groomer concentration bottles have the nice concentration label, so you fill the water up to that line, and then you'll fill it up with shampoo until it hits the fill line. If you don't have one of those, that's fine. You can use just a typical plastic bottle and then do the pour method onto it. I want you to see kind of what some other groomers end up doing. So of course, again, we're going to fill. This particular shampoo is going to be a 15 to 1, so we're going to fill up the water line until it gets to 15. Okay. And so we're at this line here because we're doing a 15 to 1, and then we're going to pour our shampoo until the water hits the concentration line. So you can kind of see how much shampoo that is using right there. All right, you would add a lid, then you would shake it up. And then there is your pour method for your shampoo. The reason why I don't like using this is because this whole bottle would be way too much shampoo for a GG sized dog. You tend to waste a lot of product if you're only doing one dog. For groomers, this works great because we do a lot of dogs in one day. So we can mix up a full bottle, use this on a couple of dogs, and then refill as we need it. For the pour method, it's kind of the same thing. We're just going to take it and we're going to slightly pour a little bit of shampoo into our dog and then we're going to rub it in. The last method I'm going to show you is the method that I'm choosing. I choose it this way because I work do with dogs one-on-one, -on -one, which means that I don't take on multiple clients, I don't have bathers, I work all on my own. Therefore, I make the shampoo per dog as it's needed. There's no batch making of a shampoo and then using it throughout the day. Every single dog gets its own individual recipe for what the dog needs. So I'm going to show you how to froth up some shampoo. 
first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water, approximately three tablespoons. Probably add a little bit more there. There we go. And then I'm going to add approximately one tablespoon of product. Now, because I do this every single day, I know exactly how many pumps it takes to create one tablespoon. You can literally measure this out with your uh, with your measuring stuff. I did. That's how I figured out how many pumps it would take. I took a teaspoon and I pumped it in until it filled up. So that's what it will kind of look like. And then we're going to take our frother here. And you can see it almost makes a full bowl of shampoo. Another reason why I like this method is because I use a lot less shampoo and a lot less water, which works when you're trying to be a green business. The frothing method is really simple. You just grab a handful and you apply your shampoo. And since this is the way that I do it as a groomer, this is the way that Gigi will get her the rest of her bath today. While bathing, you want to start with all the extra dirty parts first. That way it allows the soap contact time to really work its magic. So we want to work all of the underneath and the legs first. Once we get all of the furnishings done and the legs and we scrub between all of those toes, we want to make sure we get it nice and clean on the back. Maybe offer a nice doggy massage while you're scrubbing in all that good shampoo. shake here or there and then you'll want to rinse it all up and then we're going to apply again working the same methods legs and head first as those are the areas that get the dirtiest if your eye if your dog gets a lot of tear stains you're going to want to make sure that you apply the conditioner well and carefully the eyes. This will help stop the liquid of the tears to be able to absorb into the hair, therefore making staining less obvious. It won't actually stop the staining, it'll just help keep moisture out of that area. Conditioner helps not only to stop them from matting, but it also helps stop them from getting up and picking up all of that grime while they're out on their walks or while they're pottying, a healthy coat will not grab as much moisture because it's hydrated as a dry coat. Come on, baby, stand up. Good if your dog doesn't have coat like Gigi does and you think it doesn't need conditioner, that would be false. 
you always, always need conditioner. No matter if you have short hair, medium hair, curly hair, straight hair, you always want to apply conditioner. Same goes for the potty areas. If they seem to be having a lot of problems with the pee stains or getting that smelly pee smell because they've got a little bit of coat back there, making sure that it's conditioned and constantly hydrated will help stop those stains and the smells. And then we finish the rest of it with the back coat. Conditioning the back coat, her shorter hair, will also help pull out any of those hairs that are ready to come out and it will help reduce the shedding in your household as well. So if you have a big time shedder, conditioner is going to be your best friend. And there's always a good shake here and there. Good girl, Gigi. Now for the drying phase. Groomers, we use a lot stronger of a blow dryer, so that way it moves a little bit quicker. But I figure for this purpose, you probably don't have any of my grooming tools, so I'm gonna use a good old blow dryer. So I've got my show blow dryer here, because we usually use blow dryers at the dog shows, since we can't carry a lot of heavy equipment. And I'm gonna show you how to blow dryer. When blow drying our dogs, we wanna make sure that the heat setting is as low as it can go. The last thing we wanna do is burn our dogs. We wanna make sure that we're blow drying her back coat with the direction that the coat grows. Gigi is very comfortable with the blow drying process, so we can lay her on her side and blow dry her to make sure we get all of the skirt dry. It is very important that we take the time to blow dry her all the way through to make sure she's still not damp. Blow drying her nice and straight will also help deter mats from happening in the future. Even if you have a short coated dog, you're going to want to take the time to run the blow dryer over. Leaving a long coated or a thick coated dog damp is going to cause some serious problems in the future. If your dog isn't comfortable with the blow dryer, then you're going to want to towel dry as much as possible. Keep your blow dryer at the lowest possible setting to get your dog used to it. And if you're still struggling through it, air drying is an option. Just make sure that you go through with your brush and periodically brush through the coat as it air dries. This will help separate the hairs and allow the water to evaporate more productively. This will also help you to check to make sure that the coat has dried all the way to the skin. Grooming is an important routine for your dog to get used to and will also help you notice any health issues that may arise. Being able to touch their paws, look in their mouth, and feel bumps in awkward places will help your dog feel more comfortable if there's ever an emergency where you need to get into those places. The overall goal for grooming is to have one very thorough health check. Having a cute haircut when you're all done that's just a bonus. When I finish up Gigi's bath routine, I like to put in oil into her furnishings. This adds a little bit more hydration to her coat. It helps keep down static electricity and any of those gross smells she may pick up from playing excessively outside. Of course, we always end on a delicious treat. Thank you for joining me and Gigi today. I hope this helps keep most of the water in the tub. Until next time.